Hey everyone, this is Juno Jardic here with and welcome back to another Let's Watch of Death Battle. Today's episode is Metal Sonic vs. Zero. Now, I'm sitting here because I'm going to try to watch it on my computer this time, rather than um, on my phone. Okay, so, Metal Sonic vs. Zero. Metal Sonic will 100% win. <laughs> I've made that clear, and I think Zero should absolutely win, but who cares, let's just, let's... It's gonna be cool, so let's just go. It is the duty of all who dedicate their lives to the science of robotics. Make the coolest, deadliest machine you possibly can. Just don't make them too smart. <laughs> that never works out for you. Metal Sonic, Dr. Eggman's Hedgehog Destroyer. And Zero, Dr. Wily's Maverick Hunter. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> Dr. Eggman was a genius with a dream. This a music. dream of a world ruled by his own iron fist. However, there was just one small problem. A speedy blue problem. Sonic the Hedgehog. The fastest thing alive. <laughs> no matter how many times Eggman tried taking over the world, this freedom fighter just kept getting in his way. But like any respectable scientist, Eggman was a problem solver. Thus, he developed the ultimate hedgehog killer, okay. a machine which would not just equal his speedy nemesis, but surpass him. And Dr. Tubby called his greatest creation, Metal, Metal Sonic. Sonic. He's even got a sweet chest speaker to blast Slayer all day long. Speaker? What? No, no, no. He's just made of metal. Oh, that's cool, too. To contend with his cool blue rival, Metal Sonic was built to reach and maintain incredible speeds. And unlike most of his wacky inventions, Eggman actually got this one perfect. Metal Sonic is hella fast. Metal Sonic is also equipped with tons of tools and tricks specifically to overpower Sonic. He can fire a plasma pulse laser from his chest construct a black shield which seems practically indestructible, and blast through obstacles by going V maximum overdrive. Black shield? Maximum overdrive? You're sure he's not into metal? Cause those sound like some killer band names to me. <laughs> to activate V maximum overdrive, Metal overloads his own circuits to quadruple his speed while simultaneously surrounding himself with a destructive energy field. If all that wasn't enough, Metal Sonic can scan his opponents to copy their techniques. He copied the Explosive Knuckles Slam from Knuckles, ESP from Silver, the Batguard Technique from Rouge, and even copied Shadow the Hedgehog's signature Chaos Control. He can only copy specific moves at a time, but whatever power he takes is not limited by his physical body. This is because Metal Sonic can actually morph and manipulate his form. He totally stole that from T-1000. Funny mentioning Terminator because you're not too far off. Metal Sonic is so powerful that he's overcome his own programming, overthrown his creator, and attempted a global takeover all on his own. And he can do it too. Mm. He shielded attacks from Shadow's deadly Chaos Spears and Silver's telekinetic ESP. He's dodged attacks from Knuckles, Amy, and Espio at the same time. And he even competed in the Olympics. You know how tough it is to qualify for that? Like, okay, really that are getting Plus, desperate. Plus, he gives Sonic a run for his money whenever they race. Metal can match and sometimes even outpace Sonic's speed. Sonic's specific top speed is technically unknown. He boasts that he's faster than light, but he has yet to prove this in canon without the aid of additional equipment. Sonic's highest speed is officially described as Hypersonic, <laughs> and his best record comes from Sonic Unleashed, where he's recorded running up to 3,000 SPD. Assuming this translates to metric meters, given the game's Japanese development, this puts Sonic in the high end of the hypersonic spectrum, clocking his highest recorded speed at a whopping 6,711 miles per hour. That's over eight times the speed of sound. Damn, I wish I was that fast. Could have escaped my ex-wife way before things got serious. This speed is likely what Dr. Eggman was aiming to beat when designing Metal Sonic. Even then, with his abilities like V-Maximum Overdrive, Metal Sonic can increase his speed up to 26,844 miles per hour. That's Mach 35, more than enough to reach escape velocity. And this bot has a lot of power behind him. 
In one of his battles with Sonic, their conflict caused enough damage to break off that ginormous stalactite over the city. Look at the size of that thing! By comparing its size to the nearby buildings and assuming a granite-based composition, we can estimate that the stalactite weighs over 46 million tons. The energy required to cleave a rock that size could be as high as 200,000 tons of TNT, 10 huh. times the power of the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki. And if that's not powerful enough for you, Metal Sonic has a couple different super forms. There's a Red Titan form, his Neo form, and best of all, Metal Overlord. Again with the band name. By copying the powers of Sonic <laughs> and his friends, Metal transformed into this flying dragon looking thingamajig. He can fire missiles, shoot gigantic chunks of crystal, trap opponents, and is destroy crystal everything. Metal Overlord is so impressive, it took the combined might of Super Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles to take him down. Yeah, he may be metal as hell, but he's not indestructible. Despite being Sonic's superior in almost every way, he still loses fights to him more often than not. Metal Sonic is extremely durable, but his internal systems are susceptible to overloading if pushed too far. For example, every time he uses his V Maximum Overdrive attack, he risks permanent damage. Also, even though he's mimicked multiple organic abilities, there are sort of simplified versions. He's never displayed any at their greatest potential. Still, this is one of the deadliest machines we've ever seen. As long as Metal Sonic's around, even the fastest thing alive struggles to keep up. I use that quick attack generator, that was cool. I love Sonic Heroes. For decades, the robotic war between Dr. Light and Dr. Wily left destruction in its wake. No matter how many machines Wily created in his quest for world domination, Dr. Light's own Mega Man was always there to stop him. But like any successful genius, Dr. Wily was determined to have the final word, even if it came from beyond his grave. Wily put all the smarts he could into creating the best robot he'd ever built. Its name was Zero. Dr. Wily's plan to create the world's most powerful robot succeeded all too well. Designed for combat and violent by nature, Zero was primed to put Wily back on top. Just one problem. Eventually he became armored Zero was for totally disobedient to Dr. Wily and attacked him. I mean, I don't blame him. If that face was the first thing I saw when I woke up, I'd probably punch it too. Or send it back to the bar whence it came. How sad, all that hard work wasted over a single programming flaw. Wily was forced to seal Zero away, and he wouldn't be discovered for another 100 years. But a long nap wasn't enough to calm him down. When he woke up, he wasted everything around him, until he was stopped by Commander Sigma, the leader of the peacekeeping Maverick Hunters. Sigma may have stopped Zero, but then things got complicated. For some reason, Zero's stasis pod also contained a mysterious virus. The virus infected Sigma and, for some reason, swapped Sigma and Zero's morality alignments. So Sigma huh. turned evil and Zero turned good, just like Robot Freaky Friday. Being a good guy now, Zero joins the Maverick Hunter, making it his mission to eliminate any machine which posed a threat to the world. Because what else are you going to do in Robot World but fight crime with a laser sword? He's certainly well equipped for the job. The Z-Buster is Zero's go-to long-range weapon, with both rapid fire and charge energy shots. He's also got tons of deadly spears, hammers, and chains, but his favorite weapon is his trusty energy sword, the Z-Saber. The Z-Saber is arguably Zero's most essential weapon. With it, he can cut other machines down to size with a wide variety of grounded and airborne strikes. Furthermore, he can enhance his blade by mimicking the power of his enemies. This lets him use the Z-Saber for attacks in view of fire, ice, electricity, and even metal. But he can copy more than just sword stuff. Zero can use the Twin Dream technique to create a clone which mimics his every this move. Music. He can summon robot dragonflies to fight alongside him, call down beams of energy from the sky with Rakoha, and even use Dark Hole to temporarily freeze time. If necessary, Ooh. Zero can activate Black Zero Mode. This form halves his defense in order to double his attack power and quadruple his speed. He can also transform into the stronger and faster Absolute Zero. 
Yes, that's what it's called. In this form, he loses access to his Z-Sword and acquired abilities, but he gains razor-sharp claws and the power of flight. Check out those bat wings! You know, with all these cool powers, he's pulled off some crazy shit. He's defeated dozens of Mavericks and even Sigma himself multiple times. Not to mention stopping dozens of other threats to the entire planet such as when Eurasia, an enormous city floating in space, fell to Earth in a crash course similar to the asteroid which annihilated the dinosaurs. But that's okay, Zero took care of it. How? By flying a space shuttle right into it like a badass! And he survived! Suck that, asteroid city! Moreover, it's important to remember Zero was specifically built to be far superior to the original Mega Man. We've analyzed Mega Man before, and learned he could keep up with the speedy Quick Man and catch a 60,000 ton castle. So, Zero's better than that. Zero is undoubtedly Dr. Wily's greatest creation, but like the mad scientist's other machines, he has his downfalls. Despite being a machine, Zero is susceptible to exhaustion, and if he receives too much damage, not even his auto repair systems can return him from the brink. Also, he sometimes comes down with a bad case of edgy anime protagonist. What am I fighting for? And yet, Zero is a fearless guardian who won't rest until his world's safety is secure, even if he has to be reincarnated multiple times to do it. And kick his own ass! I don't even need my sword for such an easy fight. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, Robots can't really enjoy food, but for- Found a Maverick. I'll take Ooh, care of it. This is interesting. Starting with now! Okay, two point five B. And that's really cool. Metal's getting his on the front right. Charge shot! Zero move. Oh, he's targeting it. Okay. I thought it was about to copy Zero's abilities. I'm gonna go now, Metal Sonic Giant win, but I don't care. Monster. Metal Sonic was a worthy adversary, but Zero was simply better equipped for this battle. At Mach 35 speeds, Metal seemed like a shoe-in for better speed, right? On paper, maybe. But remember, Mega Man beat Quick Man, and Zero was built to surpass Mega Man in every way. Quick Man's top speed was recorded at 224,000 miles per hour, over eight times faster than Metal Sonic. Scaled to the inferior Mega Man, Zero could certainly handle a machine of Metal Sonic's speed. 
Zero's vast arsenal also gave him plenty of options for just about every situation, even when Metal tried screwing with time. Unlike Metal, Zero actually possessed multiple methods of stopping time, which were more instantaneous and just as effective as Metal Sonic's imperfectly copied Chaos Control. So Zero definitely had the advantage in that field. The durability difference was pretty clear too. Zero's feat with the Eurasia Space Colony trumps anything Metal's ever endured. The resulting explosion was similar to the asteroid impact which killed the dinosaurs, an event estimated to have equaled 100 trillion tons of TNT. But even surviving a tiny fraction of that explosion was far more impressive than the 200 kilotons of TNT needed to break that giant rock. And that was for Metal Sonic and Real Sonic's power combined. Even ramming Zero at full speed would not have done much. Moving at Mach 35, Metal's 276-pound body would only hit with enough force to destroy a building. To be blunt, not only was Metal Sonic outmatched in speed and durability, but he didn't have the means to truly kill Zero. Whereas Zero's shown time and time again that he could destroy enemies just as tough and bulky as Metal Overlord. Looks like That's Metal tougher. Sonic was the real Zero in this fight. The winner is Zero. Hey, don't go away, we're about to reveal the matchup for the next episode of Death Battle. And if you want to see exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little button over there and start a first membership trial. Helps us out a lot. Lucario and Regamon. Alright. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, this fight was really good. <laughs> um... Really like the like, gosh, Jets has been doing so much better at his close-ups. They've been getting better and better as time went on. They were horrible in Cami vs Sonia. They were okay in Ken vs Terry. They were pretty good in um, uh, Zoro vs Zerza. Um, they were whatever in Scrooge McDuck vs Shell Knight. They were uh, they were really cool in Natsu vs Ace, and they were amazing in this fight. I think he. I think the reason he did it is like the, this way is because they're robots. They could be done in three D. Um, I don't know if he's gonna be. I don't know if he'll do this um, with every fight he does. If he keeps doing anime fights, I'd suggest he doesn't, just because it doesn't fit. But they they were re they were really well done this time. Good on you, Jets. Um. um uh, yeah, so, not a lot to say. Like, it was right. I was expecting Metal Sonic to win 100 frame percent because uh, we know how Death Battle treats their Sonic characters and how they treat their Mega Man characters, and that kind of works out in Metal Sonic's favor. Um, but no, they, 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 I do feel like they still downplayed Zero a little bit, like, um, I mean, they were right for the like the, the like, zero one for the reasons he should, but it should have been a much wider gap than that. Um, they didn't bring up Lumine, who was like who that's where uh, that's where um, zero gets his star level uh, crap um, is fighting Lumine. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with my hair. Um, <laughs> I need to get a shower. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so they were right. So it's it's accurate, but it's not. Uh, it's a, it's it should have been a much wider gap uh, than it was. But who cares? As long as they get the main point down that. Like, they got the main point down that Zero is just way stronger, faster, and tough, tougher than Metal Sonic could ever dream of being, and is too tough for Metal to, um, uh, to kill. Yeah, um, uh, that, that's, that's good, um, but... It just should have been a wider gap, but who, whatever. The fight itself was good, still good. This, this kind of felt like Android 18 versus Captain Marvel, actually, except it was right. Um, <coughs> all right. 
Um, Alright, so next time we have Lucario versus Renamon. Finally a matchup I like. Um, a matchup I'm looking forward to, finally. Um, I have not done research on Renamon. I have not even done research on Lucario, but I know quite a bit about Lucario. Um, I'll do a little bit before we record the podcast. Um, um, yeah. I'm just trying to think ahead. Alright, sorry. Um, Alright. Yeah, so this fight was really good. And Lucario versus Renamon's up. Um, I do wonder if that's going to be 3D or 2D. Um, I do not know. We'll see. Um, I might, like, record myself watching, uh, the RTX panel. If I do that, if I do that, then I'm gonna have to record my screen rather than download the video. So, it's not gonna be good quality, but, and I don't have a screen recorder, so I can't do that. Um, oh well, we'll see how this goes. Um. Um, I might do it, might not, I don't know. Um, yeah, as for Lugaro versus Renamon, like, it, it might be in 2D, it might be in 3D, who knows. As for who wins, um, that depends, like I said in the podcast, it depends on whether, what you include. Do you include the trainers and tamers, or do you not? If you don't, then Lucario wins with stupidies. But if you do, like if, you, if it's Lucario and whatever trainer he gets, um, versus Renamon, and I think her name is Rika? I don't know. Um, then Renamon wins with stupidies. It's one of those. Um, because the thing is, Renamon is a rookie level Digimon who has, like, no feats whatsoever. Um, and I don't even think she gets any scaling. Um, like, Lucario versus Cubimon is close. Like, Renamon's, one of Renamon's evolved forms. But then you bring in Mega Lucario, which craps all over, uh, Cubimon. Yeah, but Lucario versus Cubimon, like, no Mega Lucario, that's what's close. Um, this, like, Lucario without Mega Versus Renamon without Cubimon or Rika is not close. Um, neither is Lucario with it, with it, whatever trainer he gets versus Renamon with whatever trainer she gets. But for Rika, that's not close either. Renamon slaughters. Um, I want Lucario to win. I really, really do. I think he will because I don't see I don't see them including especially if it's a two D fight, I don't see them including the trainers or tamers. Especially since they also did that already with a uh, Charizard versus Greymon. I refuse to call it Pokemon versus Digimon by the way. Um, um Uh, they already did a trainers and tamers thing with that fight, um, and it was pretty obvious at that point that Greymon was gonna win. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> um, yeah.
Yeah, I I need to go. I have stuff I need to do. So, yeah, that's about it for today. So, uh, it was cool. So this fight was cool and right. And Lucario versus Renamon will be cool. And uh, Lucario wins without trainers and tamers. Renamon wins with them. That's it. Goodbye.